All right, welcome to the next video in chapter four. Um, this one's on kinetic and static friction. All right, so uh, we're mostly going to just be answering this uh, example problem. So it involves someone pushing on a mass um, with a couple different uh, possible applied forces. So Jen could be pushing with 200 newtons to the right or 400 newtons to the right. And we want to know, we want to be able to analyze uh, the acceleration of the 50 kilogram mass. So note that um, we're given a couple of these constants, mu sub s and mu sub k. So we need to, uh, before we tackle this example problem, we need to understand what, uh, what these coefficients mean. Uh, even before we understand that, I, I just want to point out that this, this Greek letter mu, uh, it's like a u but with a tail. Uh, Greek letter mu. Uh, this is the symbol for, for uh, coefficient of static friction. Notice that they're dimensionless. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to point out is um, so static friction is friction that prevents motion. Um, so I want you to imagine that you were trying to push these two blocks to the right. Okay, a 5 kilogram block and a 50 kilogram block. You probably know that it's easier to get this one started moving than it is to get this one started moving, right? Um, so there's a frictional force that depends on... So if this thing's at rest, there's a frictional force that depends on how hard you're pushing on it, first of all. Um, because... It, so first let me explain that. Um, so friction will depend on how hard you're pushing on it. Um, so let's say we, we, we were drawing a free body diagram for this block. Uh, you have mg down, you have the normal force up, you have an applied force, and you know that, it, so imagine you're pushing on this hard block, um, you could push a, a very light amount to the right, so f applied could be really, really small, say one newton, or a little bit harder, but still not enough to get it going, five newtons. So either way, the block doesn't move. So there must be some, there's some missing force here to the left, right? Um, this is going to be a frictional force. So we're going to use a lowercase f for frictional force. Um, so we use lowercase f for any frictional force, whether it's static or kinetic. Um, static means not moving, kinetic means moving. So what we mean by that is that there are two surfaces. So whatever the block is made of, it's made of one material and then the ground is made of another material and they're in contact right here or right here for this other block. Um, if those two surfaces are not moving with respect to each other, then we have static friction. So you might see a subscript S for static. That just means that this thing is not slipping on whatever it's, uh, whatever it's touching. So FS, uh, so there's two key points here is that Fs depends on, uh, Fs can depend on F applied. So it's just trying to, it, it, it's whatever value it, need, it, it needs to be to prevent motion. It just tries to prevent motion. So whatever it needs to be. If F applied was one newton this way, this is gonna push F one, one newton that way. If this is five newtons this way, F, S is five newtons that way. Um, but there's a maximum to how big this can be. And that maximum depends on, well here, in, in these two cases, it depends on how much the block weighs. Um, but actually, what, what, what it really depends on is this normal force. Okay, notice how the, the, the big block, the 50 kilogram block, has a much bigger normal force. Okay, that's the, that's the relevant piece right here. So friction is a, is a contact force between these two surfaces, and it matters how much they're pressing against each other. And it's not mg that determines how much they're pressing against each other, it's n that determines how much they're pressing against each other. So the maximum amount, so the other, the other main point I want to point out here, is that the maximum amount of static friction, and your book is a little sloppy with this one, so, so they write this formula right here. This is bad, this should be Fs comma max. So we'll write down that equation in just a second, but th there is a maximum amount that Fs can be. Fs max depends, 
on the normal force n. The bigger the normal force, the bigger the maximum amount of static friction can be. And that's why it's hard to push a 50 kilogram mass and it's easier to get a five kilogram mass moving. This one can push back harder. The, this one, the, uh, the two surfaces can provide more static friction because the normal force is, is bigger. Remember, this is a normal force between those two surfaces. If, if we're drawing the block, the normal force is up. If, we're, if we were drawing the ground, the normal force would be pointing down on the ground. So it's a, there's a Newton's third law pair between the two. It's, a, it's an interaction between those two surfaces. Um, okay, so summing these two up, th these two statements up, um, what we want to know about static friction, the, the, form, the relevant formula for static friction, is that Fs, the static friction, is less than or equal to the maximum amount. And this maximum amount is proportional to the normal force. So the bigger the normal force, the bigger, the bigger this can be. But it also... So N, N has uh, dimensions of force. So it turns out that this constant right here is going to be dimensionless. So the maximum amount of static friction is proportional to the normal force, and that constant proportionality is what we call the coefficient of static friction. So mu sub s is the coefficient of static friction. It's dimensionless. Uh, and it depends on the two surfaces that you have depends on both surfaces. So you'll notice in our example problem, we wrote down uh, that we have a wood block and a concrete ground. And this collection of um, coefficients of friction depend on both of those two things being true. If it was wood against wood, if the ground was made of wood, you would have a different set of coefficients. If it was concrete and concrete, it would be a different set. Ice and concrete, another set. Ice and ice, another set. So you have to specify the two surfaces that you're working with in order to specify the coefficients of friction. Okay, so, so, so assuming we knew what this is made of and what the ground is made of, they, there's a certain set of coefficients of friction. And maybe it depends on other things, like the temperature of the room or something like that. But uh, the, the main thing is what, what surfaces you're working with. Um, okay, and so, so I want to point out the difference. So... so uh, Another thing is that Fs is going to try, so, so it, it, it really just prevents motion, right? If we were pushing on the block to the left, then Fs is going to point to the right. So the way to analyze um, friction problems a lot of the time is just pre pretend that friction doesn't exist. Friction is going to want to oppose either motion or what would be motion. So, so, so the first thing you have to ask is, well, can if this thing isn't moving, can friction prevent it from, from moving? So you try and figure out what Fs is required to prevent it from, from moving. And then you check that Fs value with the maximum amount. So if it's less than or equal to the maximum amount, then the object is going to stay not moving. If Fs max is not, it, if it's less than the, the amount required to prevent motion, then this thing is going to start moving. And then we go into the kinetic regime. So if the object is moving, Then we have the kinetic case. Now kinetic's easier because there's no inequalities or anything. So if, if the object is actually moving, then there is some there's some slipping going on. So there, there's an object that's moving to the right. Um, I don't want to draw this because I'm going to draw forces on this free body diagram. So I'm just going to say that the, the block is moving to the right. So there's, a rel there's relative motion going on between the two surfaces right here. Um, the object's moving to the right. Relative to the object, the ground's moving to the left. Okay, so we would have mg. We would have the normal force. Maybe something's pushing this object to the right. Maybe it's not. So maybe there's an applied force, but who knows? There doesn't have to be. Right? You, could th you could set something in motion so it's moving to the right and, there's, and you're no longer pushing it to the right. So maybe there's an applied force keeping it uh, moving to the right, accelerating to the right, who knows. What we definitely know is that if this thing's moving to the right and the surfaces are slipping, then there is a frictional force. So F, and we want to be specific in this case, this is going to be a kinetic friction that's opposite the direction of motion.
So this is a free body diagram of the block. Um, we could draw a free body diagram of the ground, or maybe this is a block on top of another block, in which case there's a, there's a Newton's third law pair here. So the bottom block is pushing on the top block to the left, like this, and then the top block is pushing on the bottom block to the right. Okay, so so if, if two objects are slipping on top of each other, you have to think about, well, which object, which direction is this object moving relative to the, the other surface? The frictional force is going to be opposite that, that direction of motion. And in this case, for the kinetic friction, this is, this is not an inequality. This is an equality, mu sub k times the normal force. Okay, so these are the two equations we have to work with. Static friction is just whatever it needs to be to prevent motion up to a limit, and that limit is mu sub Sn. And then if, if, if the two surfaces are slipping relative to each other, you have kinetic friction, and that's mu sub k times the normal force. All right. So I think we're in a position now to, to answer this question. So if this mass is at rest, um, we might want to answer the question, well, what, uh, what force is required to get it moving? That's, that's definitely going to help us, because if, if Jen is not pushing hard enough to get this mass to start moving, then it's going to stay at rest, and the acceleration would be zero. All right, so let's double check that. Um, okay, so, so we're going back to the original problem here. Uh, the maximum amount of static friction, so remember your book is a little sloppy with this, this Fs should be Fs max. The maximum amount of static friction is mu sub s times the normal force. Uh, and here the normal force is easy, uh, so it's, it's the vertical directions um, that will tell us that the normal force is equal to mg. So if you have a horizontal surface and the only thing that's happening in the vertical direction is mg and n, then a lot of times you can replace this with mg, but not always. Right, later on, we're going to be talking about ramps. Uh, the next video, we're going to have ramps and normal force, like you could see right here, normal force isn't necessarily equal to mg. They're in different directions. All right, so for this problem, we have 0 0.50. Uh, the mass was 50 kilograms. g is 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. Uh, yeah, so 490 divided by 2, looks like this is 245 newtons. Um, we actually have two significant figures, but I'm going to have a fear of rounding uh, if you have 5 to, two, to 250. That's, that's too big of a jump for me, so I'm just going to keep it as 245 for now. Um, so FS max is 245. Uh, so if we go back and look at part A, part A is saying that Jen is only pushing with 200 newtons. So for part A, we could draw a free body diagram for this thing. And of course, there's the mg, there's the normal force, there's Jen's F applied force of 200, uh, 200 newtons. The static friction tries to be 200 newtons, and it can actually be 200 newtons. This can happen. This is possible. Because the maximum amount, maximum amount of static friction is 245 newtons. So for part A, this doesn't move. The acceleration is zero. The block remains at rest. Jen has to push at least 245 newtons to get this thing starting to move. Right. So for part B, part B, she's definitely pushing hard enough to get this thing going. So for part B, this mass starts moving. You know, it started off at rest, but it, it definitely starts moving from part B because we've exceeded the amount of static friction. So part B is definitely kinetic friction. So B, F applied is bigger than Fs max. So the block moves or slips on the, the surface beneath. So the block moves and we have kinetic friction. Okay, so either you'll be told 
the two, op two surfaces are slipping, or you're, you'll be given enough information that you can deduce that, that uh, the, two op the two surfaces will slip because you, you've exceeded the static friction limit. Okay, so now our free body diagram looks a little different, right? Our applied force isn't equal to the frictional force. Um, so we have our block, we have mg and n, which are still the same, right? Th those two haven't changed, uh, and they're still 490. This looks like this is 490 newtons. The normal force is still 490 newtons in magnitude. Our applied force is bigger than our frictional force. So maybe I'll draw it like this. Maybe it's a little too extreme, but uh, F applied is now 400 newtons. I guess this is kind of silly to draw it. This, <laughs> this is uh, 400 newtons and I drew it. This is too ridiculous because this is 490. <laughs> um, so maybe I'll just draw it like that. 400 newtons. And then the frictional force is, we know is going to be less than that. So kinetic friction is less is smaller in magnitude than the maximum static friction. And actually you have a uh, challenge problem in your homework to explain why that is. So, so I definitely know that this F, Fk is going to be less than uh, 245 newtons. Um, and actually our coefficient of friction here is 0 0.30. So we have enough to figure out what this is. This is mu sub k times a normal force. 0 0.30 unitless. And then the normal force is 490 newtons. Uh, so, uh, got a calculator here. 490 times 3, 1470. If this was my final answer, I would, I would round to two significant figures. Um, but because we're going to, I don't want the, the uh, rounding to propagate throughout the calculation. So I'll keep one more. I'll keep three significant figures, and then at the very end, I'll round to two. So the frictional force, the kinetic frictional force is 147 newtons. So obviously, this thing is going to accelerate to the right. The, the applied force of 400 newtons is bigger than the leftward force of 147 newtons. So using some of the forces in the horizontal direction is mAx. So this is F equals mA, but as applied to the horizontal direction. Uh, we get 400 minus, so I'm taking the direction to the right to be positive. So 400 newtons minus the positive x direction, I mean. 400 newtons minus 147 newtons is equal to the mass, which is 50 kilograms, times AX. Okay, so 400 minus 147 is 253 newtons divided by 50 kilograms is 5.06. And at this point, because we're done with our, uh, I'm going to round at this point to our two significant figures. 5.1 meters per second squared. So Jen has a burst of strength. F five uh, meters per second, that's, that's, uh, a pretty f that's like a pretty fast car um, taken off. This is, you would notice that for sure. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I think that's about it, and that covers the, the, uh, what we want to know about that. So your book maybe is a little too, uh, this is only one page in the book, uh, but this is basically what it's saying. You know, once you, once you get past, once you get the thing going, then your kinetic friction, and then it's actually easier, because there's no inequality, you don't have to check to make sure that your, uh, the object remains not moving, etc. Okay.